Now, uh, you, you said that it takes a great deal of courage for God's elect to live in this world in the day of judgment. And now, uh, the Bible does speak of courage in Joshua. Uh, and we read in Joshua chapter 1, in Joshua 1, it says in, um, let's see. I'll start reading in verse 7. No, no, I'm sorry, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, Neither be thou dismayed, for Jehovah thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Typically, in the Bible, uh, you know, uh, God has to encourage uh, his people to be courageous because we are prone to fearfulness. And, and, uh, and we need the encouragement of God. And, of course, God is our strength and courage he is our courage and and he moves within us to keep his commandments to do his will to obey him and uh and and this will um you know uh it it, it will be um courageous in in the sense that we are doing things contrary to the way of the world uh, for example, for example, we look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and we think, wow, wow, they had great courage. They um, were of good courage, and, and they were, they were. But, uh, you know, God is not uh, revealing everything that, that went on concerning their um, inner fears, their anxieties, uh, maybe not even their discussions. Uh, all he tells us is the final result, that they approach the king and refuse to bow down. But in leading up to that, in, in hearing the commandment that was issued, whoever does not bow down the same will be cast into the burning fiery furnace and and they heard that and and more than likely you know because they were just people just men like like we are today people like we are today more than likely they heard that and uh, initial um shock initial fear and and, and uh, what are we going to do and and then you start thinking what what can we do? We can run. No, we can't run. They'll catch us uh, quickly. Uh, well, what what else can we do? Can can we hide? No, there's nowhere to hide. Um, well, do we give in? How about if we give in? I mean, we're we're still uh, we're still um, servants of Jehovah. We we still want to obey Him, but I I mean, this is this is only one thing. This is only one thing. We'll we'll live to serve God uh, in many other ways, and 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 so let's let's just give in on this point so we can survive, and and, and uh, or maybe they, nobody said it, but but maybe they thought it, maybe they thought it, and then uh, though for a true elect child of God. When we have those kinds of thoughts and fears, what comes to our mind? Maybe even Joshua 1, 
came to their mind, be of good courage and thou shalt prosper. Or uh, just, just knowing that God uh, is, is Savior and, and God is our helper and he'll never leave us nor forsake us so that we may boldly say uh, that, we, uh, that we will not fear what man does unto us. And, and many other things. Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. You know, in the days of, of uh, the Babylonian captivity, the, the Psalms were, were still around. Uh, they, they had been penned as the Lord moved David and others hundreds of years earlier. And, and they would have had these scriptures uh, to, to strengthen them. And of course, prayer, prayer, what do we do? Oh, Father, oh, 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 God of heaven, what do we do? Uh, we're going to die if we obey you. And they command we must obey them and, and disobey you. And so, um, you know, depending on how much time they had, um, they, they come to the only conclusion an elect child of God can come to. And we've seen this even after the Bible was completed. When men were taken prisoner because they were um, uh, sharing the Bible in the language of the people, in the English language, and they were taken prisoner by um, those in the churches of that time, the Catholic Church, <clears throat> and, and they were compelling them to blaspheme, to deny, to reject uh, this, what they thought was heresy. And, and then we have the accounts. And I believe, I, I don't know if all the details are correct, but I believe there were numbers of people that did go to the stake and were burned because they refused to bow the knee to men, to popes and bishops and to their edicts and, and, and to really Satan himself working in these men. They refused to bow the knee to anyone but God on those points. And that's the nature of the elect, not the true believer, not or or you know the professed believer, but of the elect, because God's spirit is within. And and uh, it when there's a point of contention like this, when when the enemy is making a point that you must do something or else we, we see the nature of God's elect is to obey God because that's the spirit God has given us. Now, you brought up 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect. Our love. What is love? What is biblical love? Keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. So at the end, and this is referring to judgment day, it's speaking, it, it tells us in the day of judgment, love will be made perfect because God will finally uh, fill up the, the sum of um, the, the revelation, the revealing of truth from his word to his people, and they will be faced with commandments that must be kept that are very hard and grievous in the day of judgment, such as no more salvation, the door is shut. And if you don't think that's hard, well, just imagine you have a child and, or you're, you're a grandparent to a child and you, uh, you know, how much you love that boy or girl. And there, there's a severe trial, severe trial for families in the day of judgment or where 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 god commands to feed the sheep and jesus three times in john 21 after the great catch of fish that is after the great multitude was saved out of the great tribulation and the great tribulation is over because they were saved up until the conclusion of that time 
And after the great catch of fish, after the great tribulation, Christ says to Peter three times, lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? Indicating God's purpose for judgment day is to discover whether or not you and I and all of us who um, we, we would think are elect, whether we truly love God or not. And, and what is love again? Keep my commandments. So after asking Peter, who's a, a, um, a picture of all of us, do you love me? Do you truly keep my commandments? Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. Yeah, we keep your commandments. Then he gives a command. Feed my sheep. Three times. Feed my sheep. The commandment of God for judgment day. Feed the sheep. Feed the sheep. Now, early on, the idea of feeding sheep and, and probably continues to this point was um, it, it was it was just dismissed as um, it, 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 nothing worthy of um, our effort. It was the idea of some, well, if we're not going to go forth with the gospel to save, if no one's going to be saved, then why go forth with the gospel? It, it and, and it, it's not worth the the trouble to go to another country with the gospel if if it's not going to accomplish salvation. Well, the the worth of it is simply in obeying God. God says to do it, and and therefore it has value and purpose and worth, as everything He commands does, and it is of the wisdom of God. And, and one thing it will reveal, and, and has revealed and will continue to reveal, if we love Christ, do you love me? Keep my commandments if you do. And here's the commandment, the main commandment for judgment day, feed the sheep. So here in 1 John 4, here in a, is our love made perfect. To be made perfect means come to completeness, to finish it, to fill it up to its full measure, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Now, boldness is not the world's idea of boldness. It, it, it's not, you know, um, storming the castle walls. Uh, without fear and and uh, and doing battle with the enemy in that kind of sense, but boldness when we look up the word is Strong's number thirty nine fifty four, and it's translated as plainly in John sixteen twenty five, uh, where the disciples say to Jesus um, that he spoke no more in Proverbs but spoke plainly, boldly, boldly, it, it, it's, it's clarity. It, it is so you can understand it and you can hear it. You, you know what's in view. Uh, for example, in 2 Corinthians 3, we, we find the same word. In 2 Corinthians 3, uh, verse, verse 12, seeing then we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, plainness of speech. And um, it, it's also translated as openly in John 18, verse 20, they spake openly to the world. So that's the idea that we may have plainness and openness of of our declaration in the day of judgment, because judgment day is the time when God uh, reveals, as it says in Romans 2, 5, it's the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, the revealing of the righteous judgment program of God as we have been learning. And, and so we, we boldly, we plainly declare it and we go forth with this message 
uh, over the internet or in person to all who who will receive it or hear it. And, and that's what this is referring to. But thank you for calling and sharing.